Have you heard people say, age is just a number? What exactly does that mean from a data perspective? Does age not have value? Aren't all numbers just numbers? I feel like you might be taking this metaphor a bit too literally. Am I? Isn't this just a phrase used by cougars and cradle robbers? No, wasn't there like a song about this? Yeah, age ain't nothing but a number. The 1994 debut song of Aaliyah. See, which was produced by R. Kelly. Oh, she was 15 and he was 27. Hmm. And they later married that year. Ugh. So, spoiler alert, age is not just a number. Good use of that phrase. But are there any numbers that are just numbers? Are there any numbers in existence that have little or no value? That's what we're gonna delve into today. If you don't like numbers, then this is not the video for you. But enough talk, more data. It's data time! I'm data. So what is the value of age? Certainly, it must lie with its magnitude. The older the person, the larger the number. In the US, if someone is 17, they can't vote. But if someone is 18, they can. You can take two ages and compare them to see who is older. And since age is time-based, you know that someone who is 18 has already been 17, but someone who is 17 has never been 18. That sounds obvious. Yes, but other numbers like temperature or the stock market can go up and down in unpredictable ways. But these numbers still have value because they describe magnitude. So what about numbers that don't describe magnitude? What about ID numbers? They don't describe magnitude, do they? Well, it depends on the number. Imagine you've placed an order with a restaurant and you're given an order number. If I have order 50 and I have order 55, you can assume my order was first and will probably be served first and mine after that. You might also be able to infer how much business this restaurant is getting. If I come back in an hour and order again and get order 60, I might be able to infer that they've done business with 10 customers since I was last there. This may not be that terrible for a restaurant, but imagine if a company asked you to create an account online and then gave you an account ID that looks like this. You might be able to guess how many customers they have, and more dangerously, you might be able to guess other people's account IDs by merely adding or subtracting from your own ID. Okay, but most ID numbers don't just increment sequentially. Most IDs just use random numbers, right? And those are just numbers, like driver's license number. Ah, well. It depends on the state. Some states like Florida and Illinois will encode your personal information into your license number, the most noticeable of which is your year of birth. Presumably, this is to help bouncers spot obvious fake IDs. Okay, but what about US social security numbers? Ah, well, social security numbers aren't quite random either. The first three digits of your social security number are actually a prefix for the state it was issued in, kind of like how phone numbers have an area code. If you have a social security number of a person born before 2011, you can use the first three digits to look up what state they were born in. You can also tell if a person is an immigrant. And before 1963, you could even tell if someone worked for the railroad. However, the US ended this practice of using prefixes after 2011. Fine, what about credit cards? Oh, credit cards definitely have information encoded into their number to ensure you're using a real credit card and not just some random numbers. Many credit cards employ the loons check algorithm to ensure that the number was typed in correctly. You can actually do this test with a Visa card. Take the credit card number and split every other number into an even and odds row. Then sum up the odds row. Then take the evens row and multiply it by two. Then take that result and space out any double digits. Then sum all of the numbers as single digits. Then take the two subtotals and sum them together to get your final sum. The final sum should end in a zero. If it doesn't, it's not a valid number. This isn't really meant as a security measure, just as a quick check to validate nothing was typed incorrectly. Credit card companies use this simple technique to ensure someone doesn't accidentally type in a wrong number or transpose two numbers, as most mistakes will result in the algorithm failing. Speaking of credit cards, let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor. And now we're back. So why is my personal information being placed into these IDs? Why aren't they just random? Ah, well, the issue with random numbers being generated for unique identification is the concern that two different places will accidentally issue the same number to two different people. If you have servers across the globe issuing random IDs without checking with each other, you run the risk of two of them accidentally picking the same number. The alternative is that you could have just one server issue all numbers, but depending on how many numbers you issue, this might not scale well. Fine, 
So are there any IDs that are just numbers? They have no value, they have no encoding, they have no hidden value. Are there any truly randomly generated numbers? Yes. The ultimate example is the Universally Unique Identifier, or UUID. This is a 128-bit number that can be generated randomly. These IDs are often used in computers to identify various pieces of data that are never seen by an outside person. The reason these numbers don't have problems with accidental duplicates is because UUIDs are so large, the odds of any two systems picking the same number is extremely low. Yeah, but you could still have two computers accidentally pick the same number twice, right? A UUID is a 128-bit number. That's a number represented by 128 ones and zeros. In regular numbers, that's a 39-digit number. That is a huge number. That's more than the number of drops of water in the ocean. If we were to represent this 128-bit number as a 16 by 8 grid of lights that can be turned on and off, it would be infeasible to count all of the combinations. If we counted each combination of lights for one frame of video and continuously went through every possible combination until we got through all of them, this video would take so long that we would need more time than exists in the history of the universe. These numbers are huge. This number still has value, but only in its uniqueness. You can generate it randomly without any encoded data. It's just a really big number. A UUID is the closest thing to a number that is just a number. So, any number that we use is not just a number. It has to have some sort of value, otherwise we wouldn't use it. Though some numbers have more value hidden inside their digits that you didn't even know about. So the next time someone says that age is just a number, then they're probably a pedophile. What? Wait, what? No, 